Dr. Jaffe, what would you recommend to do for a 15-year-old female with digestive concerns who has been diagnosed with superior mesenteric artery syndrome? Well, it's a very good question. First of all, we're, we're specifying a teenager, a 15-year-old young woman. I presume that she's menstruating. I presume that she's still in school. I presume that she's still living at home. All of that complicates the question, of course. But the bottom line is, when you come to respect uh, the physiology before pharmacology approach, then you do a different kind of testing. And it's been a long time as a pathologist and a physician, since I've heard superior mesenteric artery syndrome, it does exist. It's a basic uh, anatomic transposition. And so you have blood vessels uh, that, pr that press and compress on a certain area and, and cause a problem. Uh, in my limited experience, mesenteric artery syndrome is in the eye of the beholder. It's in the eye of the radiologist. It's in the eye of the physician. They know there's a symptom in the area that they're assessing. They know that they have some uh, anomaly in the anatomy. And they therefore conclude, oh, the problem is the anatomy, therefore we have a surgical solution. Okay. If you look over the last 50 years at surgical solution superior mesenteric artery uh, syndrome, what you find is <clears throat> the surgical procedure works in less than half of cases. So it's below placebo effect. It's a pretty intrusive approach given how poor the outcomes are. So be careful of people who diagnose in abstraction or based on a scan a solution to a problem where they have a mechanical solution to a physiologic dilemma. When you say to me, a 15-year-old young woman has an issue that might have to do with what she eats who she eats with, um, her self-image, um, how she perceives herself to be perceived in the world, uh, the kinds of social interactions that either build her self-esteem or reduce her self-esteem, all to me become important variables before I would start reconnecting the superior mesenteric art. So it is a diagnosis, it does exist. My experience is that it is an anatomic variant, not a surgical opportunity. An anatomic variant means that's how you are. It doesn't mean that everybody else is that way. It might be distinctive for you as an individual. But in the physiology before pharmacology approach, we really want to understand what to do Based on what she consumes, she should eat a diet that's very easy to digest, assimilate, and eliminate. That means no grains, but yes to grasses. It means no cow dairy, but maybe a little bit of sheep and goat dairy. It means no meat. It means as much organic and biodynamic of whole nutrient-dense foods as possible. It means getting her involved with selecting the whole foods that she prefers. Because very often when you're 15, you have opinions, but you don't feel that your points of view uh, carry enough weight uh, to be uh, followed. And I very often ask people, which of the following green vegetables do you want? Which of the following colorful vegetables do you want? Which of the following fruits do you want? Within the LRA by ELISA Act plan, so you're not assaulting the immune defense and repair system <clears throat> when they choose unwisely. And now you find there's lots of opportunity to resolve these issues without surgery. And frankly, I'm not even sure that that diagnosis, the superior mesenteric artery syndrome, um, I'm not sure that they've even fulfilled the criteria yet for that. Uh, it may in fact be the case. I have, as a uh, pathologist and as a physician, I have seen such cases. But in my limited experience, surgery is not the answer. And in my larger experience, following the LRA by ELISA Act tests and plan is highly likely to be successful in just a few months, and then you can forget about that diagnosis.